You can tell at first sight that this house in Elmhurst has an awful lot of history. It was built in the 1920s as part of a subdivision of Tudor and Normandy style homes. This one has some great lines and wonderful materials. It starts with a terrific checkerboard pattern on the chimney. Then you come down and there's all that great stone on the corners, the brick walls, there's the carved wood in the beams. And then you come inside, more wood on this great spiral staircase in the foyer. You can see why a house like this would end up as a magazine cover image in 1931. It's got some real charm. It was, though, a little bit snug for modern living, so it's been greatly expanded. We're going to take a look at that, but first let's talk to the seller who has a little bit of history with Elmhurst himself. Tom Marcucci, the seller of the house, has lived here for 30 years, I think, what, 16 of those as mayor of Elmhurst? Right? Correct. Longest serving mayor in Elmhurst history. Mm -hmm. So when you bought the house in 1982, it was much smaller than it is now, as I've mentioned. What was it about these older rooms that appealed to you? Well, it really completed the package. There was a beautiful entranceway right inside the front door, and then you come into this really magnificent room with this wonderful fireplace that kind of dominates the entire room. You mm -hmm. have the stained glass windows, original leaded glass, and then above you, you have this terrific beamed ceiling. It just really all works together to make the complete English tutor. It does, and the room next door, which I guess was originally a porch, now a small study, kind of adds to that because when they enclosed it, they kept the beams visible, kept the stone and brick visible, but made this nice small room as a relief from this room, right? So it, it fits mm -hmm. very well together. Exactly. Now, I want to talk to you before we look at the newer parts of the house about Elmhurst itself because you and I met the second time that Chicago Magazine named Elmhurst one of the best suburbs in Chicago to live in, and you've had some interplay with that. You've been responsible for some of that. Tell me a little bit about how this house relates to Elmhurst around it. Well, we really wanted to be in this neighborhood right here in the center of Elmhurst. Two blocks to the east are two wonderful grade schools. Two blocks to the west is your community high school. We're just south of Wilder Park and the Wilder Mansion, an 1868 icon of our community. We have the virtually brand new Elmhurst Public Library, the front gateway to Elmhurst College is there, and then just beyond all of that, is downtown Elmhurst with all the amenities that it has to offer, including the metro station. So it was a great place for us to locate and raise our family over the years. And you've raised five girls here. We're going to take a look at how much you had to add to make that happen. The mayor had a big family, so they needed a big family room. About 10 years after they moved in, they added this in the process. They greatly expanded the kitchen. It has casual dining, which is next to the original formal dining, where you still have a nice wall of leaded glass windows looking out over the yard. But the problem with the original house was there was no connection to the backyard. I've looked at the original plans and there was a garage stuck off the back of the house. You pretty much had to walk around it to get to the backyard. So when building this, they made sure that it would lead directly out onto a terrace and the backyard so the family could spill in and out. Now one thing to notice is this does feel like newer space than the other rooms in the house, but on the exterior, it doesn't feel new. They were very careful to match the roof lines, the brick and the stone, to the original house at the time that they were nearly doubling its size. There are some spaces that were custom made for this family. Five daughters, right? So a former closet becomes a phone booth. This is a very large bedroom for children. It was originally the master and you can tell that it was a pretty prime space in the house because it's got windows on three sides, a lot of daylight coming in. It's got a closet and it also has a cute little thing that the family preserved. This bookcase actually opens to reveal a hidden gun rack. Now the Marcucci family assures me they've never used this, but they kept it as a relic of the origins of the house. This is one of three bedrooms on this end of the house. There's another with a nice bay of leaded glass windows. And then on the other side, there's a bedroom that was smaller. It's been enlarged as the house has grown and it has its own bathroom. In the back of the house, above the family room in the addition is this new master bedroom. Similar to the old one, it's got daylight on three sides from nice big windows, but what you gain with this new master is space, double closets, and a nice big master bath. Now the bath was done in the early 90s, as was the kitchen. The sellers have not updated them for sale. What they've done instead is they explained to me they put a new roof on, they put new gutters on, and then they left the spaces that you'd need to personalize the master bath, the kitchen, for the buyers to do when they're in. 